Hi everyone, Dr. Ken here with you again. Uh, lesson 4, part 2 or 17.2 from the textbook. We're now looking at series uh, CAC circuits, in other words resistors and capacitors in series. And again, you can see here on our connection diagram we have a physical carbon film resistor in series with a, uh, in this particular case, probably a motor start capacitor. You can tell that because it's rated at uh, 400 volts or 440 volts AC. Connected to an AC supply. Our circuit diagram that represents that is a circle with a sinusoidal waveform in it. And that's our AC supply, a resistor and of course our symbol for a capacitor. So in this particular circuit, an AC RC circuit, the capacitor can be assumed to be pure capacitance because it doesn't have any losses, it doesn't have any internal resistances. Um, if there's any internal resistance in a capacitor, it is so minute that uh, for all practical purposes we can ignore it. So next we're going to look at the waveform for this particular circuit but before we jump into the waveform let's just take a quick look on the right hand side at our circuit diagram. We've got an AC supply, we've got a voltage VR in green across the resistor, we've got a current that's indicated in red being a series circuit current and current's the same anywhere in the circuit. And our capacitor, in this particular case, our voltage across the capacitor is in orange. So let's now look at the waveform diagram. And here you can see our, again, our red current going up and down, crossing over at zero at uh, the appropriate points at zero degrees, 180, etc., and 360. You'll notice the voltage across the resistor in green stays in phase, so what we mean by in phase is that the voltage rises to the maximum minus at the same time as the current. They cross over at the same time, they go to their maximum negative at the same time, and then they cross back over at zero at the same time. So our voltage across our resistor is in phase with the current but not so the orange voltage, it's the voltage across the capacitor and you can now see as the current gets to its maximum the capacitor voltage is lagging well behind, well behind. So in this particular case the voltage for the capacitor lags the voltage or lags the current across the resistor and the current in the circuit by 90 degrees. Again, this is caused because we're electrostatically charging energy into the capacitor and then releasing it back into the circuit, both in a positive end of the cycle and the negative end of the cycle, hence creating this very nice 90 degrees phase shift. So in a series RL circuit, the voltage across the capacitor lags the current by 90 degrees and the voltage across the resistor is in phase with the current. So we saw the voltage is in phase with the current, but the voltage across the capacitor is at 90 degrees behind. So you can see it's 90 degrees behind because the orange is just crossing zero at 90 degrees while the current and the voltage across the resistor are both hitting their maximum. So they are exactly 90 degrees out of phase. So let's represent this using a phase diagram and a voltage triangle. So if you uh, look at our phase diagram, we have the voltage across the resistor in green. You can see my cursor just tracing across it. We have the voltage across the capacitor at 90 degrees lag. So that's at 90 degrees, so it's at 90 degrees in here, again where my cursor, my cursor is. Remembering of course our phasor diagram is rotating 
anti-clockwise in this direction going round and round and round that's the difference between a phasor and a vector phasor has both magnitude has direction and is also rotating at the same time so that's the difference now you can see here we've just done a nice parallelogram between the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor and the hypotenuse of the triangle is the applied voltage so in this particular case we have an applied voltage represented by the length of the black line the angle is the phase angle in here so we can now put that into a voltage triangle over here on the right hand side and we can simply draw the horizontal being the voltage across the resistor the vertical being the voltage across the capacitor and closing the hypotenuse gives us the voltage across the supply so the voltage triangle is in a series RC circuit or resistance capacitance circuit is derived from its phasor diagram where the voltage across the capacitor lags that's the secret bit uh, it lags you can see my cursor there the current by 90 degrees so let's have a bit of a play with the voltage triangle very similar to the one that we played with for the inductor but of course now the triangle is just turned upside down but the basics still remain we can use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the applied voltage so we can take the VR and square it take the VC and square it add them together and take the square root of all of that will give us the voltage across the supply so written down in mathematical parlance we have V equals the square root of VR squared plus VC squared where V is the applied voltage VR is the voltage across the resistor and VC is the voltage across the capacitor so again simple application of Pythagoras' theorem for right angle triangles we can also work out the phase angle so the phase angle is this one up here the one from the horizontal and we can say that the cos of the angle is the adjacent on the hypotenuse therefore the cos of the the angle itself is cos to the minus one or the inversion that just means invert the ratio of the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse which in our case is cos to the minus one voltage across the resistor divided by the voltage at the supply or voltage total so it means the angle is the cosine so cos is often the easiest way to work it out you can use other trigonometrical ratios if they're available but cos is the typical one that we use so little worked example so straight out of the textbook uh, if we have a resistor of 60 ohms a current of 3 amps and an XC or a capacity reactance of 20 ohms we want to work out what the uh, applied voltage to the circuit would be so reasonably straightforward the uh, voltage across the resistor again ohms law volts equals current multiplied by resistance so 3 multiplied by 60 equals 180 volts so it's straight ohms law step 2 voltage across the capacitor again ohms law but this time we're going to use the capacity reactance so that's the AC resistance we're given that we don't need to worry about what the frequency is because they've given us the XC so the current multiplied by the capacity reactance we're going to get 3 times 20 that's where the 20 comes from 20 ohms so 3 times 20 obviously 60 volts step 4 we can now work out the applied voltage because we have two sides of the voltage triangle 
So we can simply say the voltage total is equal to V squared R plus V squared C, giving us 189.7 volts. A little bit of trigonometry now to get the, uh, the angle. So we know the angle is cos to the minus 1 of the voltage across the resistor divided by the voltage total, because that's the cos of the angle, giving us in this case 18.4 degrees. Our phasor diagram, very, very similar to the previous phasor diagram, except it's down in the opposite direction. So the horizontal being the resistance, giving us 180 volts. The vertical down being the voltage across the capacitor at 60 volts. And when we close the hypotenuse across the phasor diagram, we end up with 189.7 volts. And our phase angle in here, of course, is our 18.4 degrees. And you can see that's about 18 degrees because that little phasor diagram has been done to scale. And you'll notice that the voltage in this particular case now lags the current. So we have a lag situation again. We're rotating in a anti-clockwise direction so the voltage is lagging the current or the applied voltage is lagging the current by 18.4 degrees so what about an impedance around this kind of circuit well it's exactly the same as for at the inductive circuit so like the RL circuit that we did in the previous part if the current and the applied voltage are known, the impedance of the RC circuit can be found with using Ohm's law, using the same equation as we'd given before. So Z being impedance is equal to the applied voltage divided by the total current. Now remember this only works if you have the total applied voltage and you have the total current. So if we're going to work out the, the Z, here's how we would go about working out the Z. So again, we have our 60 ohms, our 3 amps, and our 20 ohms across the capacitor. And we know from the previous example that the voltage across the supply came out at 189.7 volts. And we know we've got a current of 3 amps. Therefore, simple ohms law, Z equals the applied voltage divided by the total current. So we have 189.7 volts, which is the applied voltage, divided by the 3 amps for the current, giving us an impedance for this particular circuit at 63.3 ohms. Very important to remember that impedances are measured in ohms. So now our impedance triangle for the capacitive reactive circuit. So again, same principle. We've got a voltage triangle. Voltage across the resistor where my cursor is. Voltage across the capacitor. And of course, the applied voltage. If we divide all three of those voltages, which is what we're doing in the middle triangle, by the current, because it's the one consistent thing in a series circuit. So voltage divided by current equals resistance for the horizontal. For the vertical, if we take the voltage across the capacitor and we divide it by the current, we end up with the capacitive reactance. And if we take the voltage total and divide it by the current, we end up with the impedance and again, we end up with the impedance triangle. The only difference is the impedance triangle is now got this capacitive component or capacitive reactance, which is in a downward direction to make sure the impedance is shown as lagging our resistance. 
So yes, resistors, ca resistors, capacitive reactances, and impedance have angles. They can lead, they can lag, and all those kinds of things. So an impedance triangle for an RC circuit is derived from its voltage triangle by adding each voltage, sorry, by dividing each voltage by the current. So other ways we can calculate impedance, because an impedance triangle is also a right angle triangle as we've learnt before, Pythagoras' theorem can be used to find impedance from the resistance and the capacitive reactance. So this time Z is equal to R squared plus XC squared and take the square root of all of that going to give you Z where Z is the impedance in ohms R is the total circuit resistance in ohms and XC is the total capacitive reactance in ohms so we're just applying Pythagoras' theorem to our impedance triangle to be able to calculate any one any of the sides of the triangle you can also if you have Z and you have R and you can actually calculate XC by manipulating and transposing the equation so here's an extra little worked example for you uh, we have a circuit here and we're going to calculate the capacitive reactance the impedance the current the voltage drop across the resistor, the voltage drop across the capacitor, and the phase angle between them. So they've told us we have a voltage supply of 100 volts at 50 hertz. That's going to be important. We have a resistor at 50 ohms and a capacitor at 60 microfarads. So just summarizing the values, we've got to play with capacitance, 60 microfarads, resistance at 50 ohms, voltage at 100 volts, frequency at 50 hertz. So step one, let's calculate the capacitive reactants. So we know capacitive reactants, the formula for that is Xc equals 1 on 2 pi Fc. So simply putting our values in, we have 1 multiplied by 6.28, that's the 2 pi component, multiplied by the frequency, which was 50 hertz, multiplied by the capacitance, which was 60, but it was microfarad, so times 10 to the 6 for micros. And that gives us 53.1 ohms. Our next step, we want to calculate um, the overall impedance we already know that the resistor is 50 ohms we've just calculated that the XC is 53.1 so we can now use here's our Pythagoras Z is equal to the square root of R squared plus XC squared so our Z is going to be 50 squared plus 50 3.1 squared and take the square root of all of that. That means we need the square root of 5319.61, which is 72.94. So our Z, our overall Z, is 72.94. So calculating now the current, so we know what the Z is, we know what the volts is, therefore. Ohm's law again dictates that the current equals the voltage divided by the overall impedance or the overall AC resistance, which in this case is Z. So we have 100 divided by 72.94, and we're going to get a current of 1.37 amps. Again, on this page, we calculated the capacitive reactance. Then we calculated the overall impedance. And once we had the impedance, we could also work out what the current was using Ohm's law. Step four is calculate the voltage drop across the resistor. 
Well, we know what the value of the resistor is. That was given to us at 50 ohms. We've calculated what the current is at now at 1.37 amps. So again, application of Ohm's law, voltage across the resistor is going to be multiplied by the current through the resistor multiplied by the resistance. So our 1.37 multiplied by 50 going to give us 68.5 volts. The fifth thing we had to calculate was the voltage drop across the capacitor. Similar kind of process. We know that the XC, we'd already worked that out at 53.1. We know what the current through the capacitor is because it's the same throughout the whole circuit, 1.37. Therefore, XC equals I multiplied by XC. So 1.37 multiplied by 53.1. The voltage across the capacitor will come out at 72.1. 75. Next we need to calculate the phase angle between the voltage and the current and we can use either of the three basic trigonometrical functions to do that. So the values we have the Z at 72.94, we have R at 50 ohms and we have XC at 53.17. And since we've been pretty consistently using cos, let's stick with cos. So the angle will be cos to the minus 1. The resistance divided by the impedance, that's the adjacent, divided by the hypotenuse. So cos to the minus 150 divided by 72.94 is cos to the minus 1 of 0 0.6855. And our calculator should tell us that that is 46 Point seven degrees the voltage is lagging the current remember lagging so let's just do a sum up of the last couple of sections so if we sum up in an RL series AC circuit the applied voltage leads the current by an angle determined by the resistance and the inductive reactance. So L and R, that was an inductor and a resistance. So the voltage leads the current by an angle determined by the resistance and the inductive reactance. In an RC series circuit, the applied voltage lags the current by an angle determined by the resistance and the capacitive reactance in this case. So that's an RC, that's resistance and capacitance in series. The applied voltage lags the current by the determined angle, which is determined by the resistance and the capacitance. In any series AC circuit with reactants, the applied voltage, V, can be calculated using Pythagoras' theorem. So the total V will always be the square root of V squared R plus V squared X being the reactants and that will tell us the applied voltage across the circuit. The impedance Z of any AC circuit is equal to the applied voltage divided by the circuit current. So it's very important when you're doing um, the impedance of a series circuit you must have the, t the applied voltage total and the current through the circuit and then you can use Ohm's law to calculate Z. Impedance only applies to an AC circuit and is a phase a combination of reactance and resistance in the circuit. It's important to understand that. So impedance applies only to an AC circuit and is a phase combination of reactants and resistance in a circuit. The reason we say phase a combination is because we're actually putting two complex quantities together that both have magnitude and angle. We just can't simply add them. So it's a phase combination. 
in any series AC circuit containing reactants and impedance, then Z can also be calculated using Pythagoras' theorem because it's an impedance triangle. So Z equals the square root of R squared plus X squared. X squared being whatever the reactances are. The voltage triangle of an AC series reactive circuit is derived from its phasor diagram. So the voltage triangle can only be got by a series AC circuit derived from its phasor diagram. In the voltage triangle, the phase angle between current and applied voltage in any series circuit is the angle between the reference, so the voltage across the resistor, because the resistor and the current stay in phase with each other, and the side representing the applied voltage. The impedance triangle of an AC series reactive circuit is its voltage triangle with each side divided by the current. And finally, our last sum up slide for part two. In an impedance triangle, the phase angle between current and applied voltage is the angle between the sides for resistance and impedance. So again, in an impedance triangle, the phase angle between current and applied voltage is the angle between the sides of resistance and impedance. And finally, the phase angle between current and applied voltage in any series reactive AC circuit can be calculated with trigonometry from the, VA, sorry, from the value shown by a voltage or an impedance triangle. So you can use the voltage triangle or the impedance triangle and a little bit of trigonometry to calculate the phase angles.